So I'm going to talk for seven minutes um, about uh, the wealth generation approach and leave. Um, So the origins of multi-generational practice um, originally lie in North America um, and they generated around the 1960s and 70s when social and demographic changes started to erode the traditional family life and community structures that we understand today. At LEAF we believe that connecting generations have to be much more than intergenerational. It is insu insufficient to simply link the old with the young, but it has to be much more than that. The notion has shaped a bigger conversation about what multi-generational practice looks like from inside the nursery. The larger, sorry, the nursery is already a micro-community, but how can we reconsider our place within the larger community and decide how, if we decide to weave um, connections in order to better contribute to community engagement in a purposeful and mutual beneficial way? So how do we build the trust? How do we build social justice? and nurture a more cohesive a local community around our nurseries. So, Archbishop Desmond Tutu quoted, we say a person is a person through other persons. It's a lovely quote, this one. Um, we don't come to, into a fully informed world. We learn how to think, how to walk, and how to speak, how to behave, and indeed, how to be a human from other human beings. We need other human beings in order to be human. We are made for togetherness. We are made for the family and for fellowship. To exist in a tender network of independencies. This is how you have Ubuntu, which is African for you can care. You are hospitable. You are gentle and you're compassionate and you're concerned. And this is how we want our children in society to grow and learn. So why does multi-generation or practice matter? It's been cited as to be key to supporting community cohesion, which means that people work together to build a safe, active and well-connected neighbourhood. It's a means of creating social capital, which describes the relationships we form and nurture with family, friends and colleagues and the wider community. It's described to be the glue that binds us and the grease that helps us interconnect with each other. In essence, it's also what gives us the support to bounce back from with, uh, and withstand adversity, so the challenges that we face every day. It's also formed from the local support we, we receive, such as nursery schools and GPs, surgeries and local hospitals, and other organisations and public spaces that allow communities to come together and have a collective voice and access support. This matters to anyone working with small children, because whether childcare staff, parents or grandparents, we all want children to grow up in a safe and supported environment. Particularly in London, we recognise that there are many threats to communities, often in the forms of cuts to services and unpleasant developments, intensive housing strategies, gangs and unemployment. So getting a community response may need a multi-strand approach, especially in an era of increasing cross-border migration. People from all parts of the world live next door to each other, but very few people know their neighbours. We need to find ways to weave the many different communities to, together to create safe and supportive neighbourhoods that, not, that cannot be underestimated. This requires a mutual assistance approach where communities can act for their own embetterment and on their own behalf unleash community energy and the power of natural local leaders. So very much about us doing it for ourselves. So in doing this, local people can build a better understanding of each other and promote citizenship, reduce possible misconceptions and negative stereotyping about where they're from or the geographical area they're from and foster greater respect and trust and tolerance towards each other. So, how can the nursery as a community build a bridge? The multi-generational relations are vital to the transmission of cultures and values, norms that enable social cohesion. It is widely recognised that parents transfer their values to their children in the context of the family. Yet the exchange of values and norms also takes place outside of the family, in the community and multi-generational networks. The nursery is a bridge between the family and society, a transitional space between the public and private domain. Childcare can be a place of dialogue between parents, professionals, experts and the wider community. 
Done well, it can mean a helpful conversation between parents and nursery about how to prevent things going wrong in children and families. Lives are responding quicker when lives unravel by connecting people together. Additionally, parents and staff can develop a pedagogy that brings their home culture with the nursery values, for example, self-expression, individuality, the freedom of choice and empathy, tolerance and respect. Understanding the community within which we operate is therefore not a nice to have but essential for a fair and harmonious society. Grandparents especially play a significant role in helping the, build these bridges. For many families in the UK, grandparents are the mainstay of practical support. A report by the Family Commission showed that in the UK, 14 million grandparents are providing £5.2 billion pounds worth of free childcare annually which equates to over 26% of childcare in the UK. Grandparents are involved with their grandchildren, are shown to have a positive effect, and this type of care is isolated with better adjusted adolescents. So what do we do at LEAF? The range and choice of activities is important for us. We've got activities that include multi-generational cooking, music, teens and toddlers. We've got drag time, drag queen story time, gross motor activities, but all of which have been developed by adults and the childcare um, staff together. We've had an evaluation of our multi-generational approaches that have found parents reported a sense of pride that their children were comfortable interacting with older people in a variety of settings. So in order to recognise that the multi-generational nature, multi nature of the approach, it's important that we consider how we support all generations. So while grandparents' days in community teas are really important, we also need to consider activities such as the teens and toddlers where vulnerable adolescents um, are liable to become teenage parents invited to the nursery for a block of time, just as you were expressing. <coughs> so we're also able to um, develop the social skills needed for the future as being responsible for somebody else and they're able to learn to be part of a team communication and managing a full and tiring day where children are dependent. <laughs> At LEAF, we're a positive over 50s employee where we recognise the skills and experience <coughs> learnt over years which are valuable to pass on to other generations. And also, we're able to respond to the community's needs where our nurseries are. So as an example, at our Marksgate nursery, we started and operated a very successful food bank, um, which was followed by a request from a family asking for some food on a Friday to see them through for the weekend. Now we have an up and running food bank that operates with customers every day, every week, asking for food, swapping food, so that supports them as a family. Same play sessions are held for families from the Grenfell Towers that were run from our Colville Nursery in Notting Hill, offering a safe families place for families to come and play. So these are just some key examples where our nurseries are absolutely paramount to the communities that they support. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.